chapter 24, dental unit water lines. Outbreaks of waterborne disease have occurred in a broad range of facilities. Published reports have associated illness with exposure to water from dental units. Bacteria capable of causing disease in human beings are found in DUWLs, which is reason for concern. Okay, and these are the cables um, that go connected to the hand pieces that they bring. In community water, the number of waterborne bacteria is kept to fewer than 500 colony forming units, also known as CFUs per milliliter. The water from air water syringes and dental hand pieces often has bacterial levels hundreds or thousands of times greater than those permissible in drinking water. The types of bacteria that are found in dental unit water are frequently the same types found in community water but levels of bacteria in the dental units are almost always higher. Dental healthcare workers are exposed to Legionella bacteria at a much higher rate than are members of ge the general public. Dental personnel are exposed to contaminated DUWLs through inhalation of the aerosol generated by the handpiece and air water syringe. At least one suspected fatality of a dentist resulting from legionellolysis has been recorded. Published case reports have described immunocompromised patients in whom post-operative infections developed as a result of contaminated dental water. Microorganisms in the dental unit water. The primary source of microorganisms in DUWLs is the public water supply. So saliva can be retracted into the DU, DUWLs during treatment. So it's a suck back. It's basically like if it was a um, uh, backwash when you drink out of a bottle. Anti-retraction valves on dental units and thorough flushing of the dental lines between patients minimize the chance of suck back. The public water source has a CFU count of less than 500 milliliters before entering the DUWLs. Once that water enters the DUWLs and colonizes within the biofilm, the CFU counts skyrockets. Sources of microorganism. There are two communities of bacteria in DUWLs. One bacterial community exists in the water itself. It's planktonic, which is free floating. And the other exists in the biofilm attached to the walls of the DUWLs. So this is a picture of magnifying a magnified views of biofilm. Biofilm exists in all places in which moisture and a suitable solid surface are found. Biofilm consists of bacterial cells and other microbes that adhere to surfaces and form a protective slime layer. So obviously you're going to find this inside of a hose because it's a solid surface and it's constantly wet. Um, biofilm can contain many types of bacteria as well as fungi, algae, and protozoa. Viruses such as the human immunodeficiency viruses or HIV cannot multiply in DUWLs. Biofilm and dental water lines. At the dental unit, the water enters plastic water lines which passes through a multi-channel control box 
that allows the water to be distributed to the hoses that feed various attachments, such as the high speed, hand pieces, air and water syringes, and ultrasonic scalers. So the high speed hand pieces are the, what they call the drills that the dentists use uh, to uh, prep teeth for crowns or to remove decay. Air water syringes, you'll soon know what this is. It's the um, Mr. Water Hose or Mr. Squirty, whatever they call it for the kids. And um, it, it, it emits both water and air, uh, water by itself, air by itself, or water and air at the same time, and ultrasonic scalers. Ultrasonic scalers are mostly used by dental hygienists, and there are like scalers for the teeth to remove uh, accumulated calculus on the teeth, and what it does it has like a vibration so it uses ultrasonic waves to remove or to um, kind of soften the calculus so it's easier to remove and it does shoot water at the same time cuwls have a narrow tube uh, an eighth to one sixteenth of an inch biofilm forms on the inside of cuwls as water flows through the unit and of course there's water constantly flowing through those units Growth promoting factors. Several factors contribute to the formation of biofilm in DUWLs. Water moves at normal line pressure slowly. Intermittent stagnation of water inside the units typically occurs between patients overnight and over weekends, allowing planktonic communities of bacteria to attach to the walls of the tube. And a stagnant just means that it's just sitting there. It's not moving, it's not going back, it's not going forward, it's just basically sitting in the same place. The bacteria become stabilized on a surface and the nutrients in the water feed them. This is bacteria and biofilm uh, magnified, of course. Bacterial characteristics. Bacteria embedded in the protective biofilm or a slime layer are extremely difficult to remove or kill. Bacteria in the biofilm are up to 1500 times more resistant to chemical germicides than our planktonic, which are free-floating bacteria. During the use of the dental handpiece or the air water syringe, some bacteria already present in the incoming public water, as well as bacteria dropping off the biofilm are carried out. And this is bacteria in the biofilm and the bacteria that's in municipal water, which is already is like free floating. It's already, it already comes in the water. So some methods of reducing bacterial contamination. It is not yet possible to eliminate biofilm, but it can be minimized with the use of self-contained water reservoirs, chemical treatment regimens, microfiltration, and daily draining and drying of lines. Um, some offices will have you do this at the end of the day. So some, sometimes also between patients, especially after you've had a procedure with a lot of blood, they'll let you um, rinse out the, the lines. Self-contained water reservoirs. Supply air pressure to the water bottle or the reservoir. Air pressure in the bottle forces the water from the bottle up into the DUWL and out to the handpiece and air water syringe. Self-contained water systems have two advantages. Dental personnel can select the quality of water to be used, so they can use distilled, tap, or sterile. Maintenance of the water system between the reservoir bottle and the handpiece is, and syringes is under the control of the dentist and the staff. This is a picture of a self-contained dental water unit. Okay, I guess the picture is not working correctly. This is a reservoir water bottle and lines being cleaned and disinfected. Microfiltration cartridges. Disposable inline microfiltration cartridges can dramatically reduce bacterial contamination in dental unit water. The device must be inserted as close to the handpiece or air water syringe as possible. The use of filtration cartridges combined with water reservoirs ensures improved water quality. Cartridges must be changed according to the manufacturer's recommendations. So you need to read that in order to know when it needs to be changed, like if it's once a week, once a month, etc. The Dentapure cartridge. 
chemical agents. Chemicals can be used to help control biofilm in two ways. Periodic or shock treatment with biocidal levels, levels that will kill microorganisms of chemicals. Continuous application of chemicals to the system at a level that will kill microorganisms but not harm human beings. Always check with the manufacturer of the dental equipment to determine which chemical product and maintenance protocol is recommended. Monitor water quality in the dental unit in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Infection control and dental unit water. Using the proper water, dental unit water should not be used as an irrigant for surgery involving the exposure of bone. Only use sterile water from special sterile water delivery systems or hand irrigation with sterile water in a sterile disposable syringe. Um, and if you ever work with an oral surgeon, you will know that you guys have uh, bottles of sterile water specifically for these purposes for um, anything that involves bone like implants. Flushing the water lines. All DUWLs and hand pieces should be flushed in the mornings and between patients. Although this will not remove biofilms from the lines, it may temporarily reduce the microbial count in the water. It will help clean the hand piece water lines off materials that may have entered from the patient's mouth. Flushing also brings a fresh supply of chlorinated water from the main water lines into the dental unit. Minimizing aerosol. Always use the high volume evacuator when using the high speed handpiece, ultrasonic scaler, and air water syringe. So, the high volume evacuator, you will um, be doing this in your labs, is called the HVE, which this is the suction that has the, um, the wider tip, not the one that's, uh, that bends that the patient can, that sometimes the patients um, can hold. The high volume evacuator may also reduce exposure of the patient to these waterborne microorganisms. Using protective barriers, the dental dam greatly reduces direct contact. The dam also greatly reduces the aerosolization and spattering of the patient's oral microorganisms onto the dental team. Protective barriers, including masks, eyewear, and face shields also serve as barriers for the dental team. The dental dam is also, um, is also known as the rubber dam, and it's basically a rubber film that um, it isolates whatever tooth or whatever area you're trying to work on. Um, you do need special tools to learn how to apply these. Some dentists want to use dental dams all the time. Some dentists never use them. Um, when I was a child, my pediatric dentist actually used to use dental dams for every single thing. And I think that's what traumatized me um, as a child uh, and started making me scared of dentists because the dental dam basically, you have to hold your mouth open. You have to have like a rubber bite block in your mouth so you can't close your mouth. And it's basically covering your whole mouth. Um, it's kind of scary because sometimes you feel like you can't breathe. So that's what the dental dam is. But it does protect um, from any um, saliva or any uh, aerosol that's, that's shooting back at you from inside the patient's mouth. And it also prevents anything falling into the patient's mouth. CDC recommendations. Use water that meets the EPA's regulatory standards for drinking water. Maintain recommended quality of dental water per manufacturer's methods. Monitor water quality according to manufacturer's recommendations. Discharge water and air for 20 to 30 seconds from any device after each patient, patient, patient treatment. So that just basically means um, step on the, on the motor so that the uh, high speed runs and shoots water for 20 to 30 seconds and do the same thing for the air water and syringe uh, press the buttons so that it discharge it just shoots water for 20 to 30 seconds and that kind of flushes out anything that could have uh, backed up right inside the water lines monitoring water quality the only way to know whether the water line cleaning regimen is effective is to test the water coming out of the unit two options are available to test the water Use a commercial testing service by which you send samples of the unit water and results are mailed or faxed back to the dental office or use an in-office test kit. 
when you get into the office, they will let you know what kind they use, if they use at all. The use of saliva ejectors. Backflow from the low volume saliva ejectors occurs when the pressure in the patient's mouth is less than that in the evacuator. When a patient closes his or her lips around the tip of a saliva ejector, a partial vacuum is created, which can cause backflow to occur. This backflow is a potential source of cross-contamination. And you won't believe how many times we tell patients, close your lips around the saliva ejector so that it takes everything inside the mouth out. But that can actually cause um, backflow from the saliva ejector.